Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to design a highly available and scalable media platform on Azure. And what we're going to design today is YouTube. This video is a little different from the videos that I usually work on. I usually release technical and sometimes coding related videos, but this time I decided to work on a series of software design and architecture videos. And in this series of videos, I'll be showing you how to design some of the most popular cloud applications using Azure services. And we are going to design services like Twitter, WhatsApp, and Uber, and this time YouTube. So let's get started. Now before going forward, let's understand the high level overview of the system that we are going to design. I'm going to start with the roles of the system, the users, the type of users that the system has. YouTube has three roles, content creators, weavers and advertisers. Content creators upload videos and weavers like you and I, we watch videos few times a day and advertisers, they are the people who advertise so that YouTube can pay out for content creators. And content creators, they can upload videos and YouTube does a great job of encoding those videos so that YouTube can deliver those videos to us weavers. And when it comes to the delivery, they are doing a great job, they are doing it in a massive scale. And they also have to store some metadata about the videos like tags and descriptions and the title of the video and many other things. In addition to those three problems that YouTube solves, they also have to solve things like recommendations and search, payments and analyzing the videos for copyright issues and adult content and subtitle generations and these are kind of asynchronous processes that they had to handle. Now in this video, we are going to focus on these three things, video uploading, delivery and storing metadata in a highly scalable way. And scale matters for all three aspects of our design. And maybe we'll focus on recommendations and search as well a little. Now if you look at the quality attributes of the system, this system is a planet scale system. So basically, People from each and every region, each and every country access YouTube at the same time. So the system should be highly scalable and also we expect YouTube to work every time. So it should be highly available as well. Now that we understand the roles of the system and the domain of the system and also the quality attributes that we should be targeting, let's start to draw the architecture. All right, as you can see, I'm using draw.io. Now it's called app.diagrams.net to draw my diagrams. Um, I really like this tool. We can draw amazing diagrams with it. All right, so let me start with the roles of the system. Now, as I said, we have two major roles. We have content creators and weavers like you and I. So I'm gonna start with the flow that content creator needs. So basically he has to upload videos and YouTube has to encode and store those videos in a scalable manner. All right, so first let me add content creator user here. Now this user uses a application, a single page application called YouTube Studio. So we need to host that application on Azure. Now we, we have few options to host a static application, a static web application on Azure. We can use an Azure web app or we can host it using a storage account or we can use this new, um, relatively new, Azure service called Static Web App. Why should we use a service like Static Web Apps? Now, Static Web Apps, they are built for delivering your SP applications, your Angular and React applications. So basically, the key advantage of using a Static Web App over app services is that they are not regional services. So basically, they handle the content distribution. When you create a static web app, for example, you don't specify a region, they exist globally, so they can deliver to all the users throughout the globe easily. So basically, static web apps, they work like a CDN. So I'm going to add a static web app here. All right. Now, now first, let me add this arrow as well. All right. Now that we have handled the front end of it, we need to think about the back end as well. When the user upload videos, the YouTube application need to retrieve that uploading video. For retrieving a video, we need a backend application. So we can use an Azure web app as the backend for this application. Now let me introduce an Azure web app. 
The problem with these, uh, these app services is that when you create them, you will specify a region. So they are a regional service. What that means is that, let's say you're deploying this in East US region, the users who are close to East US region will experience low latency. And if you're staying in, for example, India, you will experience a higher latency. And because of that, what we can do is we can deploy multiple set of app services. So I'm going to start with East US and I'm going to deploy another app service in, let's say, South India. And that is another region on Azure. And in addition to these two, we can add multiple app applications, one in, let's say, Europe and Middle East, anywhere in the world, based on the, uh, the user base that we have. There are a number of app services in architecture to retrieve these videos. All right. Now, the problem with this approach is that we are going to have different URLs for each service. For example, the East US one. We have eastus.youtube.com. For this one, we'll have southindia.youtube.com. And we don't want that. We don't, we can't say users. All right. If you're in US, go into eastus.youtube.com. We cannot say that. So how can we solve that problem? What we can do is we can deploy a global load balancer in front of these applications. Now we have a few options when it comes to load balancers. When it comes to global load balancers, we have Azure Front Door and Azure Traffic Manager. So Front Door is a HTTP load balancer. So basically the traffic will go through Azure Front Door and Traffic Manager is a DNS based traffic manager. Since we are uploading bigger 4K files, um, we should go with a, a DNS based load balancer so that the traffic does not go through the load balancer. Now let me add this DNS based load balancer and that is an Azure traffic manager. All right. Now let me add these arrows as well. Now we have the content creator uploading videos to YouTube studio SPA and that application can access Azure traffic manager, the DNS based load balancer to upload videos. In addition to that, the metadata as well. And we can do this in a highly scalable and low latency way as well. So one thing to point out here is that we have gone with Azure Traffic Manager. And when we configure this Traffic Manager, we can configure the routing protocol, the routing method. So there are around six or seven routing methods like priority routing, weighted routing and geographic routing. So we should configure this traffic manager to use geographic routing to achieve what we want. So basically we are directing the users based on their region to the closest um, low latency um, app service. All right. Now we have handled the video uploading. Um, we can basically retrieve the video to one of these app services. And these are just platform as a service services. We cannot store them in the app service. So we should find a storage mechanism on Azure. And, and also one other thing to think about here is that the user is uploading, the user could be uploading 4K videos. And we cannot deliver that 4K video directly to the viewer like you and I, because we could be watching the video from our mobile phone or our laptop or our, or our 4K TV. So based on the device that we are watching the video, uh, we need to adjust the resolution. Now we have two approaches here. We can encode the video when the user requests the video, we can encode it and send that to the user, or we can keep different videos with different resolutions in our backend so that we can deliver based on the device that the user is using. For that, we need to encode these videos. We cannot deliver the 4K videos that the content creator is uploading. Anyway, we need to store this video. So I'm going to go with an Azure storage account and I'm going to call this storage account the temporary storage because here we are going to just keep what the user is uploading, right? These storage accounts and also the subscriptions, they have limitations. When you have these limitations, you can think of having multiple storage accounts and you can talk to Azure. You can ask them to increase your storage size of your subscription and you have to create a storage strategy for storing like uh, terabytes or petabytes of data. So here, as you can see, we are storing the videos that we are retrieving in a Azure storage account. The next problem that we need to solve is storing the metadata of the videos that the users are uploading, the content creators are uploading. Now we, we have few options in Azure. We can go with Azure SQL or we can go with a NoSQL solution like Cosmos DB. 
I want to go with Cosmos DB because YouTube is a planet scale and highly scalable solution. And, uh, and when it comes to consistency, original consistency, it has built-in consistency and you can configure how consistent you want this to be. It has this configurable consistency. For the data that you want strong consistency, you can configure that as well. It's basically a slider. You can just select the type of consistency that you want for that workload and then you're going to get it. So it's really easy to manage the consistency. And the next thing is, since we are storing a lot of data for around millions of videos, we need to have a partitioning mechanism and Cosmos DB has built in partitioning. It will automatically handle the partitioning. It will automatically optimize based on the usage. And finally, with Azure Cosmos DB, you can have polyglot persistence. Basically, you can have different types of data APIs. For example, for some type of data you want to store graph based data you can go with graph for some you can go with document database and when it comes to YouTube we don't have a lot of relationships between these videos we have recommendations but we don't have a lot of relations as well so it's a NoSQL solution is a good fit for this so I'm gonna go with an Azure Cosmos DB for storing the data of our application all right I have just added a Cosmos DB account here all right now we have architected the video storing so basically when the user is uploading we have a traffic manager so that will load balance uh, based on the region of the user and we can store what he's uploading in this temporary storage and the metadata in azure cosmos db account what we are designing now is the video encoding subsystem and now we need to have a set of resolutions that we have specified already like youtube for example it has 360p and 480p, 720p and 1080p and these are the resolutions that YouTube has already. Now we have to convert, we have to encode these videos into those uh, different types of resolutions. For that we have to design the encoding subsystem. So what we can do is after the video is saved in this temporary storage, we can trigger an asynchronous function, a synchronous flow that will do all of that. I'm going to go with an Azure function that triggers for each video upload. Now let me create an Azure function here. All right. And this function triggers with an event grid trigger. So let me add that here as well. All right. We have the temporary storage and an event grid trigger that will trigger an Azure function for each video upload. All right. Now when it comes to Azure functions, we can we encode a video inside of an Azure function? We cannot do that because they are serverless services and they have they usually have this uh, execution time limit as well. We have few options in Azure to run these types of workloads. So basically, the encoding a video that is a highly compute intensive task. So what we can do is there are two options that comes to mind to ser two services that comes to mind, and those are Azure scale sets and Azure Batch. Now, scale set is a infrastructure as a service level service. So basically what you can do is you can create this virtual machine image and that is a good idea if you're designing a high scale media application like this. So you can configure that virtual machine image with all the tools that you need to encode the videos and you can deploy into a scale set and configure a VM type like H series or N series VM type with, with super CPUs and GPUs. Uh, to do your video encoding. That's one option and that is the infrastructure as a service level option. Also we have Azure Batch, a platform built for long running high compute workloads. And Azure Batch is a platform as a service offering and Azure Scale Sets, it is a infrastructure as a service offering. If you're going with an Azure VM Scale Set, you will have to manage the, uh, the job scheduling by yourself and you have to manage the events as well. And in both of these options, you can use H series or N series, these specific VMs for your uh, the workload that you want to run on Azure. In this case, video rendering. And also, finally, both of these services they have configurability. So basically, uh, you can use tools like FFmpeg for encoding your videos that make use of GPUs in these virtual machines. For this scenario, I'm going to go with Azure Batch. I'm going to put Azure Batch here. Now, why did I put a durable function here? For each of these videos, the function can invoke Azure Batch job, for example. In addition to this video encoding, 
component there can be many other things that we should handle in a synchronous way we need to do video encoding or thumbnail generation or analyzing the video for copyrights there can be many things that youtube does in the back end so we can have separate batch accounts for handling separate uh, tasks let's say thumbnail generation now we have separate batch accounts for handling separate services and i have added durable function here it's a little different from a uh, typical azure function it is just a serverless um, uh, block of code that executes but uh, when it comes to durable function you can invoke multiple services at the same time parallelly and you can wait until all of the services are completed so we can use something like a durable function so that we can, we can invoke this video encoding thumbnail generation or analyzing the video for copyrights and analyzing the video for subtitles and all that we can just invoke them parallelly and we can go into an idle mode the azure durable function will go into an idle mode and you can wait until everything is done so i have added this uh, serverless durable function here to manage that process this is going to be a um, subsystem of architecture so i'm going to add this uh, box here so and then we can call it video processing subsystem and when this azure function completes its execution for each video it can update the uh, the cosmos db our database so that we know the process is complete all right now we have completed the video encoding so basically now we have the copy of the video that the user has uploaded the next thing that we need to do is storing the videos that we have included in a permanent storage all right so let me add a storage account here this video processing subsystem after completing the video encoding will upload the videos to this permanent storage now the next thing that this video processing subsystem can do when a video is uploaded successfully is that it can notify the users so what we can do is we can have an azure notification hub set up so that it can send the videos to the mobile users for example we are getting this uh, if you have this bell icon if you click on it you will get a notification um, we can use a some kind of notification service here it doesn't have to be notification hub it could be azure web pub sub or azure signal Lab. based on your detailed requirement you can uh, select the service if you just want the web push notifications you can go with Azure Signal R service and if you want the uh, full web socket connections to any device you can go with Azure uh, web pub sub and if you just want the mobile notifications you can go with notification hub for sending those notifications all right that we can decide based on the exact requirement on what you are going to do now if you look at the bird eye view of this architecture we have the content creators who are uploading these videos and we have creator studio SPA hosted in a Azure static web app it manages the global content delivery and we have an Azure traffic manager to receive the backend calls as a DNS load balancer and we have Azure app services to receive the load and we have the um, temporary storage account and event grid trigger to handle this video processing triggers and it will asynchronously invoke synchronously at the same time parallelly invoke these video processing um, batch processing endpoints we have deployed we can deploy these virtual machines optimized for video processing and video encoding tasks and we are storing all this data in this cosmos db account and we are storing the videos in a permanent storage in the end and we are notifying the user all right now we have designed the video uploading system and the next step is designing the video delivery since this video is getting way longer than i expected i'm going to continue this design in my next video